Hello, my name is Dr. John Bowie. I'm a prosthodontist in Midlothian, Texas, and today I'm going to show and demonstrate how to properly bond in a titanium insert into a zirconia crown. Now, uh, the, the zirconia crown that I have here is Zircad Prime from Ivoclar, and I've used the Mio kit uh, for the, this is all monolithic, uh, but I've used the Mio clip for the glazing and staining. And then for the titanium insert, this is the DES angle base uh, titanium insert from DES USA. And I like this because you can, there's a variety of different implant platforms that you can get and the scan bodies are pretty easy. They're titanium as well so that they hold up in the mouth and then and after autoclaving. And then these actually come pre-air braided. And that's an important thing to keep in mind because uh, the components, everything that we do in dentistry, uh, whenever we want something to stick uh, to something else, we need to think of it as far as etch, prime, and bond. In this case, the zirconia itself, as you may know, it cannot be etched uh, with acid, but it can be etched with air abrasion particles. And the best thing to use is the... Um, uh, the um, silica coating. So, say for example, uh, like the, um, I can't remember the name exactly off the top of my head, but um, Rocketech would be an example of the silica coating air abrasion particles. Uh, but you can also use, and literature suggests that you can also use uh, just regular aluminum oxide uh, as well. And there's literature that says, you know, which, which size particle and then which PSI is optimum. Uh, so like I said, the desk comes pre-etched and you can kind of see that matte surface there. It's not shiny. And so this is etched as well. Now if you're doing this with lithium to silicate, you would want to do with uh, acid etching the internal portion here. Now the next thing to keep in mind too is we need to prime. And this is Monobond Plus. Uh, this is a really good product from Ivoclar. And Monobond Plus basically has everything that you need in it. It has the MDP particles. It has all sorts of different uh, resin uh, priming agents. So you can use this on composite. You can use it on zirconia. You can use it on lithium to silica. You can use it on metal. You can use it on everything. And that's the first thing to do is to use it on both of these substrates here in order to prime them for bonding. I've already uh, air braided the internal portion of the uh, crown here. And then the final thing as far as bonding is concerned, we have our Reliax Unisim 2. And the Unisim the 2 is important because the original Unisim doesn't have the MDP containing resin in it. Uh, but the Unisim 2 is actually rated for looting implant components together. There's various things from different manufacturers uh, that you can use for this purpose. So the first thing that we do is apply the monobond and the monobond just needs to go on for 60 seconds to each surface there. And I'm wearing gloves because I don't wanna, I wanna contaminate as little as possible. So I was interrupted just for a moment there, but I just applied the Monobond Plus on the intaglio surface of the crown. And then now I'm going to apply a little bit more to the surface of the um, titanium insert here. If I can pick this up. And this just needs to sit and then we'll uh, dry it off here in about 60 seconds. So uh, the thing to keep in mind about the Monobond Plus is that at this point you don't want to be touching it with your bare hands. I like to use gloves whenever I'm dealing with this just to have as little amount of contamination as possible. And then uh, whenever you glue everything together, you also want to have and lute everything together, I should say. You want to use Teflon tape in order to protect the internal channel. What happens sometimes is sometimes you'll get a crown back and you will uh, try to screw it into the implant and in the process of tightening the screw, 
uh, if there's a little resin tag on top of where the screw actually rests on the inner portion of this titanium insert, you won't be able to get that proper preload uh, to place. And sometimes you can't, you'll tighten it and it'll feel tight, but then the patient will come back later with the loose crown. And that was because um, the, um, uh, the resin is now either broken off or chipped or something, that little resin tag that's in the top of the channel there. Uh, and so that, that's an issue that you can avoid if you put Teflon tape inside the channel and then pull it out and I'll demonstrate that. So now I'm going to take these over uh, off camera and just air uh, dry them off real quick. Very carefully, I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to place in very carefully the piece of Teflon tape. I'm going to place this in and then I'm going to pull it out here in just a second. So once we, let's get this in there. You can use an abutment holder. I have an abutment holder around here somewhere, but I can't find it. Cooperating today. Okay. Sits so there, and I usually leave a little tail sticking out there. That way, I can uh, actually reach in there and get it uh, once I get everything looted to place. So the Reliax Unisim two don't need too too much. Just enough to loot it to place. And the nice thing about these abutments as well is that they have a engaging feature that only engages in one location. So you're, there's no ambiguity. Sometimes there's ambiguity. Which orientation should I put this titanium insert on uh, with some other brands? But there's only one way to do it here. So you don't need to do it on the cast if you don't want to. Some people prefer to do it on the cast because uh, even with the precision of the milling and everything, you can have some little bit of slop in that engagement and that's to make room for your cement and so um, some people will do it on the cast but I haven't had any issues yet if I'm doing like an all-on 4 case if I'm bonding in the titanium inserts there that's whenever I'll use the uh, the cast but uh, for this type of restoration it's usually pretty accurate so we'll pick this up very carefully and I've mixed it here and then we'll put a little bit here on the titanium insert. Rotate that around. Okay, and then just a little bit on the inside of the crown. The one big error that I see often from the laboratory is um, they don't air braid these titanium inserts as they should and that's a that's a huge problem uh, that's more common than you'd think and that's usually what happens to uh, these crowns whenever they are in the mouth for a couple of weeks or something and then they come back and they'll pop off and the titanium insert you can tell it wasn't air braided because it's completely shiny so a properly air braided titanium insert should have kind of a matte finish and um, it just adheses a lot better that way. So you can see here we have a lot of flash. So I'm gonna go hit this with the curing unit. You can use a light curing unit or a lab light curing unit uh, just for a couple seconds and then that'll flick right off. And then what we also wanna do first too before we do that and get the curing process accelerated is we wanna pull that Teflon tape out. And when you pull the Teflon tape uh, once we do a little tack here and clean it up, we should be able to see right through the access channel down to uh, the bottom of the titanium insert. So I'm going to go hit this with the curing unit and then we'll flick off the rest.
Now we can take this off here. You can repolish this if you want to after you take it off. And an another nice way of cleaning off some of the excess cement that's not exposed is to use a little bit of uh, alcohol on a micro brush, but that doesn't work after it's uh, set up all the way. So you just have to get in here and just kind of, you can use a sickle scaler or that's what I typically use in the mouth to clean up cement, obviously after I do a tack cure, but um, this is, you know, this will work in the laboratory if, or if you don't have access to a sickle scaler. You can also, yeah, and like I said, you know, I would, I'm going to go back in and hit this with the uh, scaler a little bit. Relax Unisim 2 auto cures. Uh, you can use Panavia. That's another, you know, highly used example for bonding titanium inserts. Uh, you can use Panavia. Uh, Ivoclar has one, like, a, I think it's called multi-link hybrid, uh, meaning for hybrid abutments. Uh, but as long as it has the MDP in it and it's rated, you know, from the manufacturer for this, uh, usually pretty good. And Relax Unisim 2 has good ratings for, um, self-adhesive in the mouth, so it has good good properties. So that's what I use for a lot of cementation cases in the mouth. But anyway, that's pretty much done. And what you'll notice too, if you look all the way through to the bottom, this has a angled screw access, but uh, you can see that we don't have big blobs of cement through the bottom there. So that's kind of what you wanna see. And uh, this is actually ready. I'm gonna buff this up a little bit down on the bottom just to remove any uh, residual cement with the uh, polishing wheels. Um, but uh, it's pretty much ready to go to the mouth. So thank you, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was educational.